The first planets ever confirmed to exist outside the solar system were found around a pulsar, a type of fast-spinning neutron star that forms after a massive star goes supernova. Since then, dozens of additional planets have been proposed to exist around pulsars, and I made a video about a few of them a while ago. However, recently a new paper came out about the existence of pulsar planets. Essentially, they say that of about the 20 pulsar planet candidates, only 6 of them are actually confirmed to exist, and a lot of them probably don't. Of course, more could eventually be confirmed to exist, and probably will, but as of March 2025, we are now down to just 6 confirmed planets orbiting pulsars. That's a pretty manageable number for one video. So what are all the currently confirmed pulsar planets like? They exist in a system that formed after a star went supernova, and because of that probably have some very exotic properties. They orbit dead stars, something interesting is bound to be going on. So this video will be an exploration to all six pulsar planets currently confirmed to exist according to this paper. We won't be talking about the ones it considers candidates or false positives. There are three rocky planets and three Jupiter-sized planets around four stars. They range from fairly normal gas giants to the remnant cores of dead stars. And what better place to start other than Lich, the pulsar that hosts the first ever confirmed exoplanets. Lich is the only pulsar on this list with an official name, but it's also known by the long designation of PSR B1257 plus 12. It's also the only pulsar on this list known to host multiple planets, with three of them in orbit around it. The star and all three of its planets were given official names in 2015, all named after various undead creatures from mythology. In 1992, the first two planets in the system were confirmed to exist. They were at first designated PSR B1257 plus 12A and B, before being redesignated PSR B1257 plus 12B and C, and then finally being named Poltergeist and Phobator. Poltergeist and Phobator are pretty similar to one another, which is why I'm lumping them together. Both are around four times the mass of Earth, making them likely to be large rocky planets. Poltergeist is about 0.36 AU away from the star, and Phobator is about 0.46 on orbits of 66 and 98 days. Though because Lich is a pulsar, these planets are very cold, despite both being around the distance from Lich, Mercury orbits the sun. Unfortunately, we can't say much else about their environments right now, because they're very hard to study. Lich is over 2,300 light years away from Earth, and the planets were found with pulsar timing variations, which really only tells us they exist, not many details about their environments. Their masses were found by just studying how they perturb each other's orbits, which is also how they were confirmed to exist in the first place. Really, we can't say anything else about them right now except for their masses and orbits, and a few estimates about temperature and theories about their composition. Speaking of which, this goes for all pulsar planets, but their composition depends on how it's formed. If these planets survived the supernovas of their stars, which is very much possible, they'd probably be rich in some radioactive isotopes that are not usually found elsewhere. If they formed out of debris in the system after the supernova, then they'd also have a bunch of exotic materials. And then there's a third method of planet formation that will become important for the later planets. Anyways, there's a third planet in the Lich system as well. It was discovered in 1995, three years after the two previous ones, and is significantly smaller. It's named Draugr, and is actually one of the smallest planets ever found outside the solar system. Draugr is about 0.02 Earth masses, which is about twice the mass of the moon and similar to the mass of Jupiter's moon Ganymede. This actually makes Draugr the smallest known planet in general with an accurately determined mass, including the planets in the solar system, though there are candidates that could be smaller. Draugr is closer to Lich than its two larger neighbors, just 0.19 AU away from the star. Given its small mass, I would guess that Draugr is probably an airless rock, there has been no actual evidence either way for an atmosphere around this planet, because nobody's actually looked for one yet. But anyways, that is, to date, the only pulsar known to host multiple planets. It's also the only system in this video to host planets with masses similar to Earth, though I'm using similar pretty loosely here. So even if the system wasn't the home of the first exoplanets ever confirmed to exist, it would still be pretty interesting on its own. But there are still three other systems to talk about, and next up is PSR B1620-26. This is the only system in this video to host two stars, that being a pulsar and a white dwarf. It hosts the gas giant PSR B1620-26b, the largest planet currently confirmed to exist around a pulsar at 2.5 Jupiter masses. It orbits both stars in an extremely distant orbit that takes over 100 years to complete. The planet was also unofficially nicknamed Methuselah for reasons I'll get to in a bit. However, be aware that is an unofficial name. Unlike Draugr, Poltergeist, and Phobator, which are the officially recognized names of those planets, Methuselah does not appear in any official database and is not recognized by the IAU, making it just a nickname. 
I'll be calling it Methuselah for the rest of the video to avoid having to say PSR B1620-26B over and over, but just be aware that Methuselah isn't its actual name, unlike the Lich Planets. Anyways, it was nicknamed Methuselah because of its age, Methuselah being the oldest person in the Bible. Methuselah the planet is estimated to be about 12.7 billion years old, because it's found in the globular cluster Messier 4. Also, like the Lich system, Methuselah was found very early on in exoplanet science, with evidence for it being found in 1993, though it was only confirmed to exist in 2003. This makes Methuselah have a few firsts of its own, including the first planet being found around two stars at once, and the first planet found in a globular cluster. Because the two stars in orbits are very dim, and it's so far away, Methuselah's estimated temperature is negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 201 degrees Celsius. This probably makes it the coldest known pulsar planet. Though Methuselah does have one other extremely interesting thing about it, its formation history. It's likely that Methuselah did not form around the stars it currently orbits, and has had a very violent history. This is because if it formed around the neutron star it currently orbits, the force of the supernova should have knocked it out of orbit. However, because it's still there, something different must have happened. And currently, it's expected that Methuselah got into its current predicament in a pretty complicated way. 13 billion years ago, Methuselah forms around a sun-like star in the Messier 4 globular cluster. As the system slowly spirals to the core of the cluster, it is drawn toward a neutron star and another star orbiting that one. When the two systems pass extremely close to one another, the star orbiting the neutron star is ejected, and Methuselah and its star are caught into orbit around the neutron star. Eventually, Methuselah's star becomes a red giant, spilling material onto the neutron star, causing it to become a pulsar, and that star eventually becomes a white dwarf, leading to the system we see today. Throughout all of this, Methuselah has been calmly watching from the outer system, probably barely affected by everything that's happened. Stellar encounters like this are pretty rare in galactic terms, but in globular clusters, they're far more common. In clusters like Messier 4, you can have hundreds or thousands of stars in the same area of space that separates Alpha Centauri and the Sun, which probably also means that Methuselah has an incredible night sky. So, unlike the other pulsar planets in this video, Methuselah probably has a fairly normal composition. We're decently sure that it formed before it was anywhere near a neutron star, so it didn't have a supernova to deal with. Really, Methuselah is more of an adopted pulsar planet than anything. At 2.5 Jupiter masses, it is the most massive planet known to orbit a pulsar, and that large mass could mean it has some interesting moons. However, Methuselah also formed 12.7 billion years ago, when the universe had far less metals than it did now, which could limit planet and thus moon formation. Anyways, all four planets so far have been fairly cold and calm. They've also all had fairly normal orbits lasting several days, or in Methuselah's case, a century. Well, that's about to end. PSR J179-1438b is the next confirmed pulsar planet, and it unfortunately doesn't have an official name or nickname I can use. When you read its Wikipedia page, it at first seems like a fairly normal hot Jupiter planet, 1.02 Jupiter masses on a short orbit. At least, until you realize that its orbital period is about two hours long. PSR J179-1438b orbits so close to its pulsar that its orbit lasts 2.18 hours. Earth's day length is about 12 years for this planet, and its orbital distance from the star is about 600,000 kilometers, which is a little under twice the distance the moon is from Earth. This planet is separated from its star by less distance than Europa orbits Jupiter. That's less distance than the sun is wide. You're probably wondering how the hell a planet survives on a two-hour orbit 600,000 kilometers from a dead star rotating once every few milliseconds. Well, there's two parts to that. One, it doesn't. And two, it isn't a planet, it's the core of a star. It's expected that PSR J179-1438b used to be a sun-like star before it spiraled too close to the pulsar and was ripped apart, leaving behind a core about the mass of Jupiter. This makes this object what can really only be described as an ultra-low-mass white dwarf stellar remnant. Or it's even been proposed by some that this object is composed of exotic matter and is only about a kilometer in radius. It's far more likely, however, to be an extremely small white dwarf rather than something made of exotic matter. Either way, PSR J179-1438b is probably one of the most insane objects we've ever found. Because it's probably the exposed core of a star, it's probably made of almost entirely carbon and oxygen. Because of its extremely high density, it's possible that all that carbon could be compressed into diamond. So on top of being this unholy spawn of Satan that has no right to exist, it could pretty much be made entirely of diamonds. 
Essentially, a Jupiter-sized diamond compressed so much that it can be classified as a planetary mass white dwarf. It probably has layers of compressed oxygen on the top, with all the carbon much lower in the object. At the time of its discovery in 2011, it was also the densest planet ever discovered, 20 times denser than Jupiter. So all in all, PSR J179-1438b is just terrifying. The more I read about it, the more I felt the sense of dread come over me. This thing should not be allowed to exist. I try to avoid going down the clickbait route when talking about exoplanets, but I would definitely put this thing at the top of my list for the weirdest exoplanets ever found. But being a strip stellar core of a sun-like star, surely these things are rare. How often can a situation like this happen? Well, apparently it's common enough for us to know two of them. This is PSR 2322-2650b, and it's another object similar to the last one. It takes 7.5 hours to orbit its pulsar, and it's also probably around one Jupiter mass. Other than that, it's likely pretty similar to PSR J179-1438b. I can't really say much about it other than what was already covered in the previous entry. So with that, those are the six pulsar planets confirmed to exist. One small moon-massed object, two super-Earths, one cold gas giant, and two abominations that are half white dwarf, half planet. Obviously, the pulsar planet population is pretty diverse, just like with regular stars, and you can get a ton of interesting environments. Draugr and its siblings are probably rocky worlds, Methuselah's had a very complicated history and is one of the oldest known planets, and I don't know what else I can say about PSR J179-1438b and PSR 2322-2650b, they're insane enough as is. And there are still a few pulsar planet candidates that have yet to be disproven, and we could very well find a lot more soon. Unfortunately, all these pulsars are very far from Earth, and their planet's hard to study, so unless something changes, what I've said in this video is probably all we're going to know about these planets for a very long time. Pulsar planets are just much harder to study than planets around normal stars. But hopefully we can find more of these planets soon, because what little we know is already pretty interesting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.